Perfect. Uh, and on behalf of the Elder Services Provider Council, our planning committee, and our sponsor, Edenton Retirement Community, we are really happy to have you with us here tonight. This is the fourth webinar in our Compass for Caregiver series. Tonight, we're focusing on navigating the holidays. Before we get started, just a few quick things. Uh, obviously, we are no Zoom pros. We're working at it, and uh, we're excited that you're uh, trying out this technology. Uh, huge thanks to Frederick County Division of Senior Services, who's been providing Zoom training for those who are interested. Uh, if you are interested in doing that or have a friend perhaps who didn't want to be here tonight because they weren't sure about Zoom, uh, doing that Zoom training with Dara Markowitz is a great way to get up to speed and take advantage of the technology, which uh, I think we all agree is probably going to be around for a long time to come. We can neither see you or hear you here on the computer tonight. You're going to communicate with us via the Q&A button. Uh, you can ask questions of our speaker. Uh, or let us know questions about senior care in general, or let us know if you're having some technical difficulties. I've got some great folks behind the screen who are keeping an eye on things and they'll hopefully will be able to keep things running smoothly. As you saw prematurely, we do have a sponsor tonight. Uh, Edenton Retirement Community uh, is gracious enough to sponsor our program tonight. The Elder Services Provider Council is a group of senior care professionals here in the county committed to supporting one another, but most importantly, supporting the seniors and their caregivers in our community. So um, ESPC is happy uh, to welcome our sponsors to help us offset the cost of the webinar, but really more importantly, to give you some information about some of the services that are available to you here in the county. So if one of my folks in the back could go ahead and play that quick video again, we'll hear a, a quick minute from Edenton Retirement Community. Hi. Hi, good evening. It's Jennifer from Edenton Retirement Community. We're so proud to be a sponsor of this evening's program, A Compass for Caregivers. So we're all safe and well here on our campus of memory care, assisted living and independent living residents. And we hope that you and yours are as well. I'm so happy that you're taking advantage of this evening's program. ESPC is such a wonderful resource for the caregiving community and we're very proud to be a part of it. Um, all right, so enjoy the program and have a great evening. Bye. Thank you again to Edenton for sponsoring tonight's event. Okay, so we're going to get started on our navigating the holidays, and I'd like to do that a little warm up. We'll see how we're doing. We're not so great with technology tonight, but let's go ahead and try some polls. And uh, the first poll that we have for you. Wondering if you are planning on hosting one of the upcoming holidays for your family or friends, uh, people coming in from outside your home, not the people that live with you. And uh, is this different than what you would do if there wasn't a pandemic? We'll give everybody a minute to... So it looks like some people are still trying to decide and I'm glad you're here tonight. Maybe you'll get some insight. And uh, it looks like uh, the majority of people are definitely doing something different this time around than they would have last year. Um, so can you, hopefully you can see those. We've got another question about traveling for the holidays. Are you planning to travel out of state? for the upcoming holidays? And again, is that different, or traveling out of the area, or is that different than what you would normally have done? So it looks like we've got just a uh, one brave soul headed out, the majority of people staying home. 
uh, and about 50-50, whether that's different or the same as what uh, you would have been doing otherwise. And then one final question. How worried are, are you about being around other people this holiday season? Very worried, somewhat worried, or not worried at all? So we're kind of uh, quite a few folks very worried, uh, somewhat worried. And again, that brave soul, not worried at all. Good for you. <laughs> and you can see that. So we know that as folks who work with caregivers that the holidays are difficult in the best of times, right? Lots of extra stress and pressure, triggers, um, history, uh, lots of challenges, and this pandemic, there is no question, is, is adding a whole nother dimension to that. So I'm so excited to introduce our speaker tonight. And if you give me one second, let's see if we can bring her up on the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and introduce McGean while she gets her camera on. McGean White is here with us from the Alzheimer's Association. Um, McGean is an MS and an RN uh, who is program manager of the Western Maryland chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. In that capacity, McGean provides supervision and coordination of Alzheimer's Association programs in Western Maryland, including volunteer led support groups and early stage programs, helpline follow up, care consultations, volunteer training, advocacy, community education. As part of the program team, she helps identify, engage, and partner with community organizations, government entities, and local healthcare organizations and businesses to expand the reach and the impact of the Alzheimer's Association. So our program tonight is not necessarily dementia specific, but um, McGean is a great person to share with us some insight to get us all thinking about how to survive the holidays. I'm sorry, I think, Christina, we both pressed the camera button at the same time, so it, it disabled it for me. You have to invite me again. <laughs> oh, I am sorry about that. No, no, my fault. Okay. Give us a second, folks. McGean, you are not queued up uh, as a presenter or an attendee. I don't see you. Huh. And yet I'm here. <laughs> I yet you're here, either. so. Um. Well, uh, you can imagine what I look like. <laughs> I apologize. Um, Christina? I yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because she's using my login code. Okay. Uh, click on her. She's probably. Oh. Uh, she's she's one of my, that one of those participant IDs. That's perfect. True. All right. I can see the one that's speaking. Ask to start video. Oh, thank you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rayanne. I appreciate that. Sorry, everyone, for that uh, little uh, adventure. <laughs> All right. There you go. Welcome. Well, let's going to go ahead and share my screen to get us started. Can everyone see okay? I hope so. So we know that the holidays, just as Christina said, are often filled with sharing and laughter and memory making, and but they can also bring, you know, stress and maybe disappointment or sadness. And now, due to the COVID nineteen pandemic, there's a heightened risk for spreading the virus, especially for older adults who tend to have underlying health conditions. Hence, our gathering tonight. If you, as a caregiver, persons living with health conditions or any disability or any need for caregiving may feel a certain sense of their own loss uh, at this time of the year as they remember previous holidays where they might have been able to do more, participate more um, because of the changes that they've experienced. At the same time, you as caregivers, as you probably know, we feel overwhelmed by maintaining traditions, providing care, adhering to safety precautions. This year, there's so many different pieces to the puzzle. Um, so we're gonna unpack a little bit, focusing on you. 
one of the reasons I titled this presentation Finding Joy as a Caregiver is, is the importance of in the midst of the holiday normal stress plus the pandemic stress, we need to make sure that you're doing some good self-care as a caregiver to be able to find joy both in the art of caregiving, the art of celebrating the holidays and being with your loved one, either in person or virtually. Um, so we're gonna start approaching this as one of those, um, like the airlines say, you put your oxygen mask on first and then you put your, the mask on your loved one. COVID-19 has definitely added more stress to our holiday journey, just even thinking about it. Even those of us who uh, did a little bit of uh, social distance or physical distance trick-or-treating might have experienced that at Halloween. Our basic needs are challenged, getting things done, going shopping, etc. We've been living with it for nine months, but it still is impacting us. Socialization, who can I take my loved one to be with? Where do I need to be careful? Um, all those things. And when things are out of our control, that stress or adrenaline rush often kicks in. So we get that fight or flight and our bodies get tighter. Um, everybody holds their tightness in a different area, their stress, some in their shoulders or their neck, their lower back. So we wanna address that. Some of the other added stresses that impact our physical nature something that's being called COVID fatigue, right? We're nine months in, we know we're not there yet. We're exhausted. We just want this to be over. Our energy level is low. We may not be sleeping well. And as we think about the holidays, that may even cause us a few more sleepless nights. We have to keep an eye on our blood pressure is the stress of trying to get everything done and, and including safety in the mix. Um, causing our blood pressure to go up. Our diet and our digestion, stress acts on our bodies in a variety of ways, including our gut and our sense of loss and grief. We wish everybody could get together. Maybe you're part of a family or a, a community that celebrates either in a faith community or your family of 10, 20, 30 people that normally get together at the Thanksgiving table or any of the holidays in December as well. And we know that it's not gonna be the same. There is a sense of loss for that, as well as where you are on the caregiving journey with your loved one. There could be loss of what he or she could do last year as to where they are right now, whether it's physically or intellectually. Um, things to keep in mind. So where to begin in this world of chaos that we're in the midst of? We have our own chaos in our caregiving journey. How do we put all of it together? And here now I'm asking you tonight to feel joy. And instead you may feel help. You know, how can I handle all this? Sometimes you may feel like this. The pieces of the puzzle are falling apart or you feel disconnected as you think about preparing for the holidays. Maybe this is your image that we're going over the cliff in a clinic that's already on fire. And sometimes you just need, I don't know if everyone can see this well, so I'll read it for you. It's a woman and a doctor having a conversation and the doctor says, this prescription will help with his depression. He can take it at night before bedtime. Another pill, he has so many now, she says. And the doctor says, and he takes them at the same time every day? Yes, every day at the same time. Iris, how are you coping with all of this? It's not easy being a caregiver. Are you okay? Tell me, honestly. And Iris begins to sniffle. And she says, can you give me a prescription for some hugs? Because sometimes we just need a hug. So what is that joy that we're, we're aiming for as we approach the holiday season? It's that feeling of great pleasure and happiness, delight, jubilation, glee, all these things describe joy. And yes, we might not reach all of them on this holiday journey, but when, if we look for the joy in the little moments and in every piece, rather than getting so focused on the details of the planning and making sure everything is perfect this holiday season, 
our joy will be contagious and our loved one for whom we're caring, whether at a distance or in person, will notice the joy in our hearts and it will be contagious. So that's our goal. How do we find it? Right, we know, especially in these pandemic times, the only constant is change. We're not sure each day what the rules, regulations, and situations gonna be, not only in our own homes and in our relationship with our loved one that we're caring for, but also in society. So we need to go with the flow and be flexible. As you think about where you're finding joy is and thinking about the holidays, is the glass half full or half empty for you? So how do we find that joy? Don't sweat the small stuff, let it go. This season, there's so many things, so many parts of the journey for holidays. You have to let some things go. Pick your battles, determine what you really want to accomplish with your family, your loved one. Accomplish one thing a day. If you have a, a task list like many of us do as caregivers, try and focus on one thing as you're preparing for the holidays. Remember to practice self-care every day. You know, how is your physical health? How is your mental health? Rely on your faith or spirituality, a support group or others in your family or others in your network. COVID brings physical distancing, but not social distancing, right? We can bring others in for help. We can, we can ask them to do things for us outside of our homes or participate in other ways to make sure that the holiday experience is a memorable one for everyone. Once again, using your creativity. As a caregiver, you're probably already very creative. Depending on the situation of the individual you're caring for, you may have had to meet physical needs or emotional needs or a combination of all of the above, right? To support your loved one. You're used to always coming up with ways to handle the situation and there are resources for you to turn to. So what about now with COVID? Well, the holidays and COVID just cranks up our creativity a few notches. We need to get a little more prepared. So what do we wanna do? We wanna name the problem. Okay, Thanksgiving's first. We've, we've done with Halloween, we got Thanksgiving and then we have Hanukkah and Christmas, New Year's, Kwanzaa. What are the possible solutions? We wanna to focus tonight on how we approach things. If we have an open mind, we realize like the quote says, I don't feel like walking with or dealing with either my loved one or this situation today, I'm too stressed. But we have no choice, we have to do it as caregivers. However, if we switch off our minds for a moment and change the channel and said, and say to ourselves, I may be thinking all about the stress that it's piling up and it's, it's making me more anxious, et cetera, but I'm gonna choose to look for the positive. Okay, today I'm gonna spend time, we're gonna write some Thanksgiving cards together, or maybe we'll do a, an art or arts and crafts project. Every creative solution is a victory worth celebrating. So as you approach your planning for the upcoming holidays, Try and look for those positive moments each day. And of course, humor is always helpful. Every time you find some humor in a difficult situation, you win. Laughing with your loved one at the reality that we can't do everything the way we, we want to, but we're coming up with new ways. Even trying out new tech, technology and laughing about it. And or finding those individuals who know your caregiving journey and be able to share it with them. You know, sometimes it's, it's so important to allow others into your circle and then laugh. So as we think about this, what do we miss the most? What do you enjoy doing? What have you always wanted to try? Perhaps now that you're in this unique situation with the holidays upcoming with your loved one and with the pandemic, maybe you can try something different every day. We know in the caregiving journey that even the little accomplishments mean so much, both to the one you're caring for as well as to ourselves. So perhaps set a goal each day and track your progress. 
get that sense of accomplishment at the end of the day. Hey, we wrote 10 Christmas cards or we baked cookies or, you know, whatever the project might be. We decorated the house a little bit or we figured out how to use this Zoom so that we can engage with those who are across the country since they're not coming this time. Try something new for yourself and with your loved one. Just a little more on keeping you joyful. Just breathe. Realize that you're not alone. Limit the negativity and the stress that, oh, it's so bad that we can't be together and, oh, I can't finish everything I need to do. Stay in the moment, be present to your loved one. Help others if you have the opportunity. Sometimes that feels good beyond your caregiving role to you know, donate some food or, or uh, some clothing or some funds to a needy organization. Take care of your basic needs. Get information from reliable sources so that you can trust you know what to do. Turn around those negative thoughts again and keep a routine, even if it's a new one, to help you and your loved one feel safe and healthy. Just to sum up, you know your loved one, understand what activities would be good for them at this point in their care, in their journey with whatever their healthcare needs are. Make and use a schedule or routine during the holiday season when usually there's so much hustle and bustle. Well, this time maybe we're gonna do most of our shopping online. And we're gonna do a few smaller home cooked meals. Manage the environment, make sure your home is safe. If you do have guests, figure out who's gonna be where and how you're gonna maintain that physical distance and safety. Are they gonna quarantine before they arrive, et cetera. Look for the resources to succeed. And at the end of the presentation, we do have some websites that have some practical tips as well and practice that self-care. And remind yourself, I, I put up these quotes and ask you to think if there's one that resonates with you, take hold of it, maybe jot it down, memorize it. And every time you're feeling overwhelmed, remember that quote, I'm doing the best I can. What I'm doing would be hard for anyone. I'm not perfect and that's okay. I can't control some things that happened like the pandemic, right? I only need to do what works for right now. Even when I do everything I think I can think of, I still may not find a solution alone. I may need to reach out for help. I will try to get help from a counselor if my situation becomes too much for me. We have to be honest with ourselves. If it is overwhelming, we gotta figure out who's gonna be our point person. Is it gonna be a counselor, um, a therapist or a good friend that I can just share with and unload all the stresses of the holiday and the pandemic. So now let's turn to the holidays. Once again, a time to get together, memories, laughter, good cheer. But we know the holidays look different. Despite these circumstances, we can still have fun and find meaningful and creative ways to connect with each other. We need to adjust our expectations, right? That's why you may say, oh, that's interesting that the, that photo is crooked. But if you take a look at the photo, these two women, one the one in front with the red hair looks like, oh my gosh, here she goes again. My sister's telling me exactly what to do. <laughs> and the woman at the back is like, well, why can't we just all get together? Or why didn't you tell me about something, et cetera? We need to throw out a lot of expectations this year. And hopefully we'll all be more flexible, but it's hard when we have strong traditions or events that we like to attend um, and participate in. A good plan is to discuss those expectations with your family members or your community ahead of time, right? Set up a meeting. Say, hey, everybody, we know the holidays are going to be different. Let's all get together. It could be Zoom or Skype or in person if you live close, or even an email, uh, a joint email that everybody can respond to, or a conference call. Um, there are a variety of ways, but nonetheless, discussing 
those expectations. This is where our loved one is, whether it's our mom, our dad, or grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whomever. This is what's going on with them right now. And then given the pandemic, let's figure out what we can do for the holidays. We need it to be simple and safe, right? As a caregiver, those are two important parts and fun, of course. And communicating to each other those expectations. What's the situation at home? Maybe everybody used to come, now they can't. Setting realistic expectations. We gotta determine who's gonna do what for the meal for Thanksgiving. And be honest with your own limitations and needs in your caregiving role. Maybe a lot has happened with your loved one since last year. Are they sicker? Are they more confused? Is there other aspects of their health going on or their interests and needs in addition to just the pandemic? So as we look at our traditions, let's choose the most important activities and traditions. What do you really want to hold on to? Is there one practice or activity that you want to hold on to? Consider doing catering or takeout for the holiday meal rather than preparing. It's best to host a small event, like a small family dinner, maybe even multiples of them. We can celebrate the holiday all weekend with smaller groups, small visits, or start a new tradition. If you do do a potluck dinner, which is a suggestion, you wanna make sure that not everyone is serving everyone, not family style, depending on who's at the table, where they're coming from, the distances they've come from, Etc. You want to be careful maybe if one person is serving everything, if people brought different dishes, etc. Just to keep people safe. Or do a vo virtual holiday gathering. This is the lowest risk and has been encouraged, you may have heard in the news, for all of us, not only those who have a vulnerable adult, you know, either with them or in, in their family. Do a dish exchange. If you live close to others, Plan a menu together, you do the potatoes, you do the, the turkey, you do the stuffing, what have you. Put them into the storage containers, distribute, and then get online and you are all eating the same thing. Or you can just share recipes. So if you're doing a virtual get together, decide who's gonna be the host and what platform you're gonna use. Are you gonna use Skype or Zoom or um, there's also all sorts of ones through a lot of the different um, platform companies, Amazon and Google, et cetera. Share a detailed plan, start time, share tech instructions for everybody because we know we're not everybody's gonna be on the same page and have used the same program, share recipes. And for the sake of your loved one for whom you're caring, your older adult, try to have everyone seated and ready to dine together at the same time. Um, I know that's usually, you know, the buns are in the oven, things aren't done, but as much as possible. Each person can share one thing that they're grateful for, perhaps around the table. But do keep in mind that attention spans are shorter online, especially for older adults staring at the screen can, can get cumbersome. Even if you do have a big screen TV, it still can be difficult. So I know sometimes the Thanksgiving table, I know in our house, it can last hours and hours of chatting, going through all sorts of topics because we haven't seen each other all year or for a long time. But if we're doing it online, we might take it and snip it. <laughs> this is the joke. Here are some of those um, platforms or companies that do have, depending on your financial abilities and your online abilities, uh, Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, FaceTime, if you have an iPhone, um, Facebook portal, if you have one of those, the Am Amazon Echo Show, Google Nest Hub, Max, uh, or just a conference call just to have everybody on the phone at the same time. Freeconferencecall.com is one of those. So there's, excuse me, there's a lot of different ways that you can make this happen. This time, because you've got your loved one, maybe pass on the hosting. You know, let someone else host in their home so you don't have to worry about having everything set the way you usually like to do. Now, if you are gonna travel, obviously it hasn't been recommended that travel happens, but make sure that everyone who's coming has not had symptoms, has not been exposed um, within the last 14 days as much as possible. 
change a holiday dinner to a brunch or a lunch. Um, this, this can help with, especially if your older loved one has any memory or confusion issues, which can happen more at night. If you're celebrating at night, you wanna keep the room lit. And gather outside if the weather permits, right? If you're in the middle of the day, perhaps for Thanksgiving, rather than you may usually eat at four o'clock before the football game, or I forget what time football starts, sorry. Um, but maybe if you try to eat outside, if it is a nice day, use a heater or you can use a tent, but you should have three open sides on the tent. Um, so use blankets and, and have a short, shorter time if it is very cold, but who knows with the way we've been experiencing climate change, it's been kind of warm the last <laughs> several days here. Um, but so, but keep that in mind. Don't totally rule it out. There are ways to stay warm and still enjoy each other's company outside. Maintaining a routine throughout the holiday season, stick to your loved one's normal routine to prevent disruption or confusion. <laughs> and plan time for breaks and rest for both your loved one, if you are either living with them or going to their home to care for them. Um, and even if they are in a facility, you still wanna take that time for yourself. As much as possible, the holidays are a great opportunity for you to in involve your loved one in the festivities. Build on new traditions and memories together, right? Here are just a few suggestions reading, making crafts, watching a favorite film together, looking through photo albums, wrapping gifts, baking, etc. You want your loved one to feel a part. Adapt your gift giving. Involve them in choosing and gifts. Depending on what <clears throat> their health concern is and how they've changed over the past year, you want to choose gifts based on their interests and abilities, right? We want to most importantly avoid dangerous gifts, things that might be harmful or too difficult. Board games that have tiny, tiny pieces and are hard to read, complicated electronics. A lot of this is sort of um, common sense, but there are things to think about. Give gifts that enhance independence and activity in your loved one. Uh, a ticket to their favorite musical, even if it means that that ticket is one to an online performance versus an in-person one, or it might be for something in the fall of 2021. Um, meals that are easy to prepare, if, especially if your loved one is living alone or living at a distance, right? A fruit basket photo albums, those are always great memories um, to bring back or to share what's been going on with you in the last year. And there's even those, I'm sure many of you have seen them digital photo albums where the photos rotate. Exercise material, always thinking about good um, physical fitness, games, your time is most important. And technology, there are some of those pieces of technology like the Echo or Siri or the Nest that, that even though it seems like, oh, are they re replacing me as a human since I can't get to my loved one, um, that I'm caring for from afar, not necessarily. They can also be a great source of entertainment as well as activity. Um, just here are some more gifts that on organization and the familiar uh, music, picture books, blankets, scented lotions, short trips in the car, <laughs> or a walk. Going for a walk is also a great gift if it's warm enough outside. And when there is comprehension and understanding that is poor, there are some other gifts. If someone is having some confusion either due to the pandemic or just feeling anxious, a visit from a well-behaved pet would be great, right? Or collages of photos or mementos, warm and comfy, comforting items, stuffed animals, hand and body lotion along with the hand massage and lots and lots of affection. And when people ask you what you want for a gift, make sure that you're caring for yourself. So that could mean food, offering to run errands, a gift certificate to your favorite restaurant for carry out. Spa is probably not a possibility at this time. A cookbook, something that will help you take care of yourself as you care for your loved one. 
And when your loved one is in a long-term care facility, a holiday is still a holiday, whether celebrated at home or in a facility and in the midst of COVID. If you can, depending on the rules and the protocol, and, and we're gonna ask Rayanne to speak to this in a little bit, but join your loved one in the facility if it's possible for any planned holiday activities. We know they're still going on, but once again, follow those protocols. Possibly if you're able, allowed, bring a favorite holiday food to share. Um, and some of this can also be done you know, virtually or outside, depending on weather, et cetera. Read a favorite holiday story or poem aloud. There are certainly ways to engage with your loved one, both electronically or virtually, as well as if you um, have permission to be either in person or take your loved one out. If you've been caregiving from afar and your loved one lives alone, holidays are the perfect opportunity to kind of see what's going on with your loved one. There's usually a spike in long-term care and other housing alternatives just after the holidays when we learn that, oh, maybe mom, dad, grandma, grandpa needs a little help. So give a big hug, look for weight loss or gain, increased fragility, strange body odor, Look at their mail. Is there something that's been piling up, especially from banks or letters from charity? Take a drive. How does the car look? Um, does your loved one seem preoccupied or distracted when driving? Can they see still very well? Are there any warning lights on the dashboard? Take a look at the kitchen. Are things expired in the cabinets or in the refrigerator? Are there multiples of one type of item? appliances that are broken, um, any signs that your loved one might need a little more assistance than you thought they did the last time you saw them. Look around their living area, look for piles of clutter, or lack of housekeeping. If mom used to be super, super neat and clean and things aren't so good, it may just be that she got behind, but it doesn't hurt to ask or, or at least notice to see if there's something changed and have their activities decreased. Obviously in the pandemic, all of our activities, at least going out activities and engaging with others physically has, um, has certainly changed, but did they seem to have less interest in things? Notice any pets or plants in the house. How are they doing? Walk around the grounds. Is there anything that their house, their home might need? Maintenance, things piled up. And if you're able to talk, perhaps on the phone with um, those in your loved one circle, has there been anything that they've noticed as far as any decline, whether physically, uh, emotionally, or intellectually? Is there any concern that they have? So the holidays are an opportunity to share time with the people we love, both in person or in this case, possibly virtual. We want to make the celebrations easy on you and your loved one. That does take planning, meeting with other family members, um, and maybe scaling back some of those, the decorations, the planning, et cetera. Obviously, we're not going to be going out to as many events, but perhaps we can still participate in them virtually, whether it's a faith community service or whatever it might be. With planning and adjusted expectations, Holidays this year can be happy, joyful, and filled with those memorable moments. And you can find that joy as a caregiver that you can share with your loved one. Some resources, if your loved one does have any type of dementia, the Alzheimer's Association is here for you. That's our toll-free number. If you'd like the um, link to the CDC for the guidelines uh, nationally regarding the coronavirus and the holidays, there's also, I put the Family Caregiver Alliance, they have some good tips. And there's a few other sites that you may check um, that we would suggest. And I'm sure you all have suggestions and ideas as well. So my wish for you as we wrap up is that you find your reminder that life goes forward, that upsets and confusion doesn't have to overtake you. We want you to have that moment of clarity so that you can find that joy that we know is in there because your loved one, despite the challenges that their journey may bring to your own life, you still love them and you know how wonderful they are as an individual. Um, I know 
you know, when I accompanied my father at a distance through his journey with Alzheimer's disease, it was the little times on the phone or when I was able to visit in person, the conversations, the memories, the story sharing, all those things and the photographs really made a difference despite having to do all the extra things that we had to do to make sure we were safe. And that was even pre-COVID. Um, and it, it takes a community and we know that you work hard to balance all these portions of your life. And I just wish for you that you can let go of the small stuff and be able to focus on the meaning behind the holidays for you and your family and your loved one, rather than all the details. McGee, that was a beautiful message that I think all of us, uh, a lot of great takeaways. Um, folks in the audience, I welcome you to use that Q&A button to type in any questions that you may have. Um, or actually, I'd really be interested if you have ideas or suggestions that things you have tried that have worked well, uh, gift ideas that you have for those folks that are hard to give. I uh, will be happy to share those with others. I bet you have some great ideas. Um, we do have one question, McGee, that's come in. And do you have any suggestions for how to speak to your loved one when you notice a decline in their health and their ability to live independently without being accusatory or belittling? Sure, um, definitely that is a hard conversation to have, but you know you can phrase it that using those I statements, um, I'm, I'm seeing that you're having a little difficulty with whatever, have you noticed that in yourself or, um, you know, uh, or rather than blaming or pointing out, but just taking it on yourself. Oh, sorry, I guess I've, my background is not well. Um, taking it upon yourself to, to uh, share what you've noticed versus saying, this is going on and what are we going to do about it? I don't know, does that make sense? I'm open to additional suggestions as well, but that's certainly something that we've used before. And speaking in a, not in the midst of everybody's there and you wanna tell mom what's going on and you know, make sure you have the right environment, the right situation and one-on-one -on -one is much better than multitudes. So, you know, five or six of you saying, mom, we've noticed, um, or dad, we've noticed, we, we wanna, uh, do it in a gentle, quiet environment and and then just share you know, that this is this is important to me. I see this is happening. Are you experiencing any any changes yourself or depending on what the situation is? Thanks, McGean. Uh, great answer. Those are tough conversations to have in the best of times, and you're right in a big holiday gathering, you definitely want to pick your time wisely after after the fray. So uh, I wonder if there are any other questions out there or any great ideas, use that Q&A button um, to speak to those. McGean, how about, what about when some people in the family are really conscientious about the pandemic and fearful and other people maybe aren't, aren't, aren't quite there, they're feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, any suggestions on how to navigate the disparity Sorry, could you repeat that? My internet just did a little blip. <laughs> I I I, I'm wondering for families, uh, you know, when some people in the family really think everybody should stay home and not go near mom or dad, and then you've got some others who are not quite so conscientious. Any ideas on how to help broker between those different people? That That is a really tough one. Um, and I know probably all of us caregivers and beyond are, are struggling with that, but especially if we have an older, uh, older members of our family that might be within that vulnerable community or even a younger person with a disability or an Ill, a chronic illness. Really, it's, it's once again, trying to be open and honest with each other. And that's why it's important to have these conversations now to say, this is my concern as to why I don't think we can get together. And now the other individual may say, okay. And so from that perspective, if I think we can't get together, then I need you to share with me all the reasons why you think we can. 
can you assure that we will be safe, that we will be able to physically distance, you know, to think of all the things that are going to keep people safe um, at this time. And on the other side, if an individual can say, uh, yes, we, we have, we're going to have our main meal, one person is going to do all the serving and everything was cooked in a clean environment, etc. We're not going to share utensils or everybody's going to bring their own food, but we're going to be together. We're going to be socially distanced, you know, kind of looking at what the requirements are for safety. They are not easy conversations. You want to be good listeners, active listeners, trying to hear the emotion behind what people are saying. And I know this is, this is a very, um, um, high emotion conversation mm -hmm. as far as people feel strongly of no, we should not, or yes, we need to get together. It can't be Christmas without. And there are alternatives if there is internet access or a telephone um, capability as far as there are ways of connecting. And, and sometimes in some families, it's coming down to a vote, um, you know, so to speak, as far as who, who gets to um, how many people feel like, no, we can't get together and no, we can't. Now, of course you can always say that because I'm concerned about mom, I, I won't attend. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I can quarantine for 14 days before our holiday. And so because of that, I think it's safest that I don't attend in person, but I will attend virtually or something like that. You, know, you can set up family rules and regulations, so to speak. <laughs> I think, right, as you said, it really comes down to communication. And I think remembering that you are not alone. Everyone in this country is having some kind of conversation similar to this. So it's not just your family that's having to make these tough decisions. I think all of us are going to be disappointed to some degree this year that it's just not the same. Um, another question back to the long-term care issue, and I wonder if um, Rayanne might just want to speak to that uh, mm -hmm. and what's happening in facilities. Yeah, thanks, Christina, and um, great presentation, McGean. You know, long-term care facilities are getting updates uh, every week from the state of Maryland and the health department. Um, so if you do have a family member or a friend or a loved one that's in a long-term care facility, um, find out from them what they are, um, you know, communicating with residents and families about visitation, about the holidays, um, and be prepared that there's going to be changes. Uh, you know, every week we're seeing just how much things are changing with the pandemic and every facility could be at a different level from one another. So some facilities are already making the decision that residents, it's not safe for them to go home with families for a holiday. Um, and so I, I'm sure that visitation will be even more important there at the facility safely. So please um, communicate with the staff at the facility and find out what the plans are. Thanks, Rayanne. And we've got um, another, a great question actually. So this is the first time in 10 years of caregiving that these folks don't have a parent to take care of mm -hmm. and it feels like they're hitting a brick wall. Any suggestions? That's a tough one. That is, um, you know, you still want to bring them to the, to the celebration in memories and reflection. I know it's hard and you wanna own your grief. This time of year is very difficult for many of us because unfortunately it's also a time of year when we lose our loved ones. Um, and, and we don't wanna discount that. It's not, they're still very important to us, those memories, that individual, and you still want to share with that, but it, you have to decide as a family um, if it's, if it's, time to move forward. You still want to remember them at the celebrations, maybe share photos, re reflect on, have some time for reflecting on stories and own your grief and loss. But at the same time, maybe start a new tradition that, you know, if you celebrate Christmas, maybe we, we put a special ornament on the tree that everybody recognizes, or we read a poem, or we all take particular time um, 
uh, during our celebration to remember our loved one, to help us to move on. Um, certainly there are additional resources out there. I don't know if you've participated in any grief or loss groups around the holidays. Sometimes that can be very helpful as well, meeting with others and um, having the opportunity to express what you're feeling and, and start to move forward. But if anyone else has any other suggestions, please. That's a, that's a great idea and that's a really tough position. Your identity becomes a caregiver and when you're not that caregiver anymore, you can really feel a substantial amount of loss. And I think it's uh, important to recognize that as McGean said, to, to sit with that grief and accept that it is different and hopefully uh, time will help ease that pain, but uh, certainly holidays bring up all sorts of things. So thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Definitely a great step. Anyone else have any questions or suggestions? We, again, are so happy to have all of you join us tonight. I apologize, we had some technical difficulties. Some folks were not able to get on the call tonight. Um, I'm really excited that we have figured out a way to post the videos. So videos of past webinars and tonight's video will be posted on the Elder Services Provider Council website. That's espcfrederick.com. And uh, you will be able to go there and view those. They're under the Compass for Caregiver um, tab. It's also where you can register for the next webinar, which will be held December 10th. Navigating the detours. We know as caregivers that you set out on a course that you can easily be knocked off your path, whether it's something small or something major, but those detours can be challenging. So we're really excited to have Linda Myers from the Mental Health Association to join us to talk about how to stay resilient, how to, how to navigate those changes uh, the best way that you can. So that will be uh, December 10th. Uh, ESPC is well on our way to planning for the new year. We've got great ideas. We've got uh, ideas that we're scheduling out through at least July. Again, we recognize that this um, mode of communication is probably going to be required for a good period of time before it's safe to be together. But we also know that for caregivers, this can be a really easy way for you to sneak some time to yourself to get on a webinar. Uh, and do something good for yourself that doesn't require travel or hiring someone to come in and stay with your loved one. So uh, we welcome your ideas. You've had some great ones that you've shared during registration, keep it up. Please spread the word. We, we want these webinars to be engaging for all sorts of people. If you have family or friends in other locations, they're welcome to register. So thank you all for being here tonight. It was a great evening, McGean. Thank you so much. We appreciate your wisdom and expertise. Everybody stay safe. Have a good safe holiday, regardless of how you'd celebrate it. And we will see you back in December. Also a uh, quick thank you again to Edenton Retirement Community for sponsoring our webinar. Uh, you can visit Edenton. Uh, Rayanne, you wanna give us that website real quick? Um, it's www.edentonfrederick.com. Perfect. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thank you.